Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the features of the XTR-265 laser radar detector from Whistler. Uh, the first thing we want to take a look at over here is how to turn it on. We've got our power and volume switch. If you roll it one way, uh, it's going to click to turn the power on, and if you keep rolling it, it's going to adjust the volume up. If we roll it back the other way, it's going to adjust the volume down until it clicks to turn the power off. Now when we do first turn it on, it's going to go through a little power on self-test, let us see what the different alerts look like and sound like. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn that on and see what happens. Alright, and as you can see, it uh, lights up the H, lets us know we're in the highway mode, which is the default. And so let's go ahead and take a look and see what some of these buttons do. On the top here we've got our control buttons with a dark, quiet, city, and menu. And the first one I want to show you is the dark button. And what we're going to do with this is when we press the dark button, it's going to change the brightness of the display. Uh, the first time, I'm going to set it into the dim mode, uh, which is going to slightly decrease the illumination. And uh, next time we press it, it's going to put it into the dark mode. And in the dark mode, it decreases illumination a little bit more. But then when we do pick up an alert, it will completely shut off the display. And once that alert is passed, uh, illumination will come back on. And if we press the dark button one more time, it's going to beep twice, and we'll return to our full illumination. Okay. Uh, next I want to show you is the quiet button. Now this is going to serve two different functions. Uh, if we press the quiet button when the unit is idle, when we're not getting any alarms, it's going to turn on the auto quiet mode. And we'll hear one beep to let us know that that's turned on. Okay, and in the auto quiet mode, what this is going to do is you'll get a few seconds of your normal alerts, and then it's going to change over to just a beeping sound. Let's go ahead and trigger an alert and see how that works. As you can see there, the, uh, the alert tone changed a little bit. All right, and if we press the quiet button again, it's going to beep twice and turn off the auto quiet. All right, uh, the other way that this functions is if we press the quiet button during an alert, it's going to mute that one alert and anything within 20 seconds of it. And then after 20 seconds of idle time, uh, your audio tones will return. Okay, so we'll go ahead and trigger an alert and see how that works. As you can see, I pressed the quiet button, and now the alert is still showing on the screen, but we're not getting the audio. Now, if I did want to bring the audio back during the alert, I can go ahead and press the quiet button, and the audio will return. All right, uh, so that's the quiet button. Next is going to be our city button. Uh, the default, like I say, is on the highway, and this is just the normal operation of the detector. Uh, the first time we press the city button, we'll see it'll change to a C and that lets us know that we're in the city mode. In this mode, uh, the sensitivities of the detector are not changed. Uh, the only thing that changes here is the way that the audio sounds work. Uh, when we do get a signal, it's gonna give us a few seconds of our normal audio tones, and then the audio will go away completely. All right, next time we press the city button, you'll see it'll change to a C and then a one. That lets us know we're in city one mode. Okay, in this mode, we get our normal audio alerts just like we're in highway mode but the sensitivity of the X-band is decreased. That way we're not as likely to pick up false alerts from security systems and automatic doors, that sort of thing. And if we press the city button one more time, we'll be in city two mode. Let's see a C and a two. And what this is gonna do is completely shut off any X-band detection. And if we press the city button one more time, it'll go back to the H, let us know we're back to highway mode. Okay, next button on here is our menu. And in the menu, we're gonna be able to change several of the different settings on the unit. Uh, the first one that's going to come up will light up the V. That's going to let us turn on or off the VG2. Uh, if VG2 is used in your area, you can turn this on by pressing the quiet button, and you'll see the little decimal light up down in the corner. And that lets us know that that function is turned off, rather turned on. And if we want to turn it back off, we'll just press the quiet button, and the decimal point goes away. All right, if we press the menu button again, uh, it's going to light up our low-profile alert periscopes, and you'll see the decimal corner uh, is flashing. Well, that's just know that the alert periscopes are set to flash whenever we get an alarm. Uh, those alert periscopes can be set to always off. As you can see, the decimal point is no longer lit. Or it can be set to always on. Or we can press it one more time and turn it back to the flashing. Okay, the next option here is for the pop mode, the P. Uh, it is defaulted to off. Uh, you can again turn this on by pressing the dark button or back off by pressing the quiet button. 
Alright, and if we do want to exit the menu and save our changes, we can press and hold the menu button for three seconds and it'll beep twice. And we're back into the uh, highway mode. Alright, now again, like I showed you earlier, to turn this off, we'll just roll the volume wheel until it clicks and the power is turned off. Okay, so these have been the features of the XTR265 laser radar detector from Whistler. You can see some more of our videos at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Whistler Group Inc. And as always, thanks for watching. Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the features of the XTR-265 laser radar detector from Whistler. Uh, the first thing we want to take a look at over here is how to turn it on. We've got our power and volume switch. If you roll it one way, uh, it's going to click to turn the power on, and if you keep rolling it, it's going to adjust the volume up. If we roll it back the other way, it's going to adjust the volume down until it clicks to turn the power off. Now when we do first turn it on, it's going to go 